I don't know about you, but when I feel down, I do everything I can to try to distract myself from it. In this conversation, we're going to learn why actually embracing sadness will make us happier in the long run. Welcome to Happiness Adventure. I'm Lisa, and together we'll explore ways to cultivate real joy in our lives. My experience of most people is it's like they're trying to get out through heavy surf and keep their hair dry. Mm. <laughs> Which of course you try and get out through the surf by keeping your head above it and it's going to throw you tumbled and smashed up on the beach again. Right. You want to get out, you dive into and then you're free of it. You know? And so um, it's similar in life. It, I was listening to a show on NPR uh, last year or so. It was an interview of a guy who had written a book about happiness. And he was talking in particular about people who had lost their eyesight, who were quadriplegic, you know, had some great disability where once they were without that and something occurred and now they had this handicap. Mm -hmm. um, and they test out to be just as happy or happier than the norm. Mm -hmm. And that's not surprising to me because they've gone through these challenges and the other side of it, they have a sense of gratitude and discovery and openness. How would you recommend somebody who shies away from feeling sad, which is something I do all the time, like a beginner in being sad, how do you start to approach diving into it versus over it? Hmm. So the first step is probably stop denying the sadness. Mm -hmm. For example, we live in a society that's phobic about death. Mm -hmm. And so people won't allow themselves the experience of deep grief and mourning, most people. The people who seem to, th to do really well through deep loss like that are the people who allow themselves to grieve and allow themselves that experience. Because you allow yourself the sadness, you allow yourself more joy. So first of all, it's an understanding. It comes from an insight. And it also helps to be around somebody who's followed that path beforehand and can stick with you and contact that in you. So it brings up some sadness, huh? Yeah, you know, just contacting that experience. Mm -hmm. So there's this guy who's hiking in the woods one day and he finds the larva to an emperor moth. And he thinks, how fascinating. It'd be great to take this home and watch this thing emerge from the, I don't know whether you call it a chrysalis or a cocoon. Mm -hmm. but he takes it home and he gets into his den and over in the corner he sets up with a towel and a lamp where it kind of blocks the direct light but sets it so it's warm. and. And, and begins to observe the moth. And as it's warm, it starts moving and wiggling around more and more. And, and pretty soon the cocoon starts to crack open and the, the moth starts to emerge. And he's just fascinated by it. And there comes a point where the moth, it seems like it's about halfway developed, still struggling to get free of the cocoon. And it's struggling and it's struggling and it's struggling and it's, it's really not making any process. And this guy is, but spent so much time watching it, he's almost like developed feelings for the, for the moth. So finally he goes into the bathroom, he finds the fingernail scissors. And he comes back and he just slips the tip of the fingernail scissors between the moth and the, the edge of the cocoon. And just snips the little edge of the cocoon to, give it, to break it loose, to mm -hmm. give him some freedom. And sure enough, in very short order, the moth emerges from the cocoon. But that moth never flies because it's in that struggle that the fluids are forced down into the tips of the wings and help the wings to develop and be strong. And so I think it's a wonderful metaphor for life and the discussion being about happiness. I think a lot of times our happiness comes from our dealing and wrestling with the getting our wings strong by dealing with the challenges in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I think happiness, happiness is about people embracing their lives for what it is. And some of the deepest, darkest, most difficult places come some of our greatest, greatest gifts. I've been speaking to James Newton, who's a nationally known consultant, keynote speaker and trainer. And you can learn a whole bunch more about him in the description box below this video. While you're there, please don't forget to like, comment, and share. And before you go, subscribe to Feed Your Happy with a bite-sized video each week.